All right, welcome back. This is November 10th. We're going to be doing some more critical reasoning problems with strengthening and weakening. We've just gone through the whole rules bit. So now we hit the copyright screen again. It's probably all from GMAC, GMAC Carp Software. Let's go ahead and jump into one. Let's do it. How about? That one. Remember where the answers, the answer option are found. Those are here. Go for it. Okay, if you don't have a choice selected to this problem, please pick one. Okay, remember with problems where you have to strengthen or weaken stuff, talked about this a little bit in the last session, but the, the biggest issue that people really have with these problems is that they actually think about words like strengthen the argument and weaken the argument which are not words that normal people think about in real life. I mean, when people consider things like this, I mean, strengthening and weakening arguments is definitely a thing that people do all the time. But when people do that, if you think about how those conversations work, those conversations are always in terms of specific words. You know, like if someone is, okay, I think I should switch to this cell phone plan because it'll save me like 10 bucks a month. Nobody would be like, oh, I can weaken that argument. This is an optional talk, right? People would be like, actually, if you switch plans, you will not save money. And here's why. It, it's, it's specific. So I mean, give me a smiley face if that general idea makes sense. That crux of these things is to translate this into specifics. Like you have to understand what weaken an argument mean in this case. Like what what are these things is one of the questions. So <clears throat> translate into specifics. Okay. So you should read that first because then you know what you're looking for in paragraph, which is you gotta find out what the argument is. And then so the fears are groundless is the conclusion that's that's still vague. So we might have to read this from top to bottom. How would you guys summarize in the chat box? Who can tell me what it specifically means to weaken the argument? Like who can translate this? What are you looking for here? Looking for specifics, right? Like if the argument, so something like prove less true doesn't really help either. And neither does all this stuff about counterpoint to main claim. Looking for actual specifics. Like if the argument was like something like blah, 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 therefore this incentive will cause sales of car X to increase. In this case, weaken the argument would mean the incentive will not make more people buy the car. So this is what you have to do. You have to translate this into specifics, and then you can think about why that is, right? So 
let's talk about what, and I mean, we have to, fears and groundless is still not specific. So like that, that's still abstractions. Like the word, those fears and groundless, those are still kind of like the words weaken and argument. Like they're, they're still not words that really mean anything. Um, another way that you can think about this, like how would I explain this to a 10 year old? I mean, ten-year-olds have no idea what any of those words mean. We can argument, fears, groundless, proposal, plan, technology. I mean, those words. Ten-year-olds have no idea what that stuff is. Like, ten-year-olds only understand concrete, specific. So, like, if you said to a ten-year-old, like, this incentive will not achieve its goal, a ten-year-old would have no idea what that means. On the other hand, if you said, like, okay, this plan will not make more people buy cars, that would make sense. How would you explain to a 10-year-old what this means? We can the argument. Actual 10-year-old, guys. Opposite the author's argument will not mean anything to a 10-year-old. There we go. Yeah, right? We still will not reduce pollution. Um, when, and that's what's killing the fish, although more, more specifically we're worried about the pollution, right? So like what we have here is this lake used to be really polluted. Now it's not anymore. But they're thinking about building a pipeline and that might pollute the lake again. But they say, the other guys say, so also what you should do is you should put yourself on a side of this argument. You should imagine that you are invested in this in some sort of personal way. So like, they're saying that this, this will be fine to lay a pipeline across the bottom of a lake. So you are taking the side of the environmentalists with this one. So, like, they're saying, if we put in this technology, the pipe will not leak. Also, importantly, you can't raise any issues of, like, what if the technology doesn't work, because they wrote it as, as long as it does. So, this means that we're not thinking about the technology not working. So, we can't. But that's not an issue. Like, what if the technology doesn't work? It's not an issue. Okay. So what do we need? Well, we need a reason why pollution would not go down. or like why pollution would actually increase because their argument is it won't increase. Even if we lay down a leak proof pipe, that's what we need. Notice you guys need to do this before you go to the answer choices, too. I mean, this is a standard for what a correct answer should do. A correct answer should do this. Give me a smiley face if this makes sense. That smiley faces. Yeah, right? So this is what you should, you should always do this. Always, always, always always have a standard, specific standard for what correct answers should do. Before you go to the choices, all right, because once we do that, I mean, the point is that in terms of time that you spend, a very good criterion that you can use here is that you should spend at least three quarters of the time here 
and making a standard. Like the answer choices combined should be like 25% or less of the total time that you spend on this problem. Like 75% or more, 25% or less. Like when people don't do this right, they sometimes end up spending as much as 80% of the time looking at the answer choices, which that shouldn't happen. I mean, you, you should have a standard and then you can just look at the choices and you see if they meet the standard or not. So if you're spending most of the time, that's not a good thing. Also, this should not happen. There will never be a choice that is close. I mean, all of these questions will always have four answers that are completely wrong and one answer that is brown. It's going to be white, 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 and black. If it, if it seems like there are answers that are close, that means you've got to review the problem and understand what is wrong with it because that, that's not the thing. Like there are never wrong answers that are close to being correct. So this, pollution, industrial pollutants. So in the water, choice A says if you lay down a pipe, it's going to kick pollutants up into the water. That's exactly what we want. Because the pipe is not leaking, so there's nothing leaking out of the pipe. And yet, choice A gives you exactly a reason why the pipe would still cause pollution to increase in the water. This is what we want. Smiley faces that makes sense. Okay. What about B? What's wrong with B? There's two things that are very wrong with B. Yeah, the biggest one is that it had nothing to do with the pipe. I mean, the argument is not like, okay, will pollution randomly increase in this way? I mean, this is an argument about whether you should lay a pipe down across the bottom of the lake. I mean, this is why it helps to actually imagine that you are in a real dispute with real other people about this, because if you imagine you're at some sort of town meeting or some sort of city council thing and you're, you're actually arguing about this, think about what the argument is. But the argument is, should we lay down this giant pipe across the bottom of the lake? Choice A is actually a reason why laying down a giant pipe across the bottom of the lake will increase pollution. Like that is what the argument is actually about. Choice B is not, it's got nothing to do with the pipe. So, in other words, if choice B is happening, it's happening either way, depending on not irrelevant whether you lay the pipe down. So, smiley face if that makes sense. And then on top of that, I mean, the argument is about pollution, and they do use the word pollution specifically for pollution, and this is agricultural runoff. We don't really know if agricultural runoff is the same type of pollution. So. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's a great thing, but it's, it's also not the issue that we are discussing here. It's not the same thing. It's industrial pollution. But the, past this point, there's no point in even thinking about it because it's not about the pipe. And the whole issue here is, should we lay a pipe down? Other choices? The C is specifically irrelevant because of these words. Make sure that you know this, guys. If you say if blah, 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 or provided blah, 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 or given blah, 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 then instantly any sort of objection to those things is irrelevant. This. This thing here in the uh, pink highlight. If you have a conversation with your friends and it's like, if you had a billion dollars, who would you give it to? 
I mean, obviously, most people don't have a billion dollars or any reasonable chance of getting a billion dollars. But that's, that doesn't stop you from having that conversation, right? Like, it, you can still talk about if I had a billion dollars, here's what I would do with it. And that conversation would only be assuming that you actually had a billion dollars to give away. So anything like, you're not going to make a billion dollars, irrelevant. What if you didn't have a billion dollars, irrelevant? Smiley face, if that makes sense. There's not a lot of patterns in these things, but this is one of the closest things you're going to see to a pattern. I mean, if the argument says if or given or provided X thing, then you just completely ignore objections to X because that's the whole point. And but that's, that's the whole reason why we have the word if in our language is it takes all of that off the table. So C, C is about whether the technology works or not, it doesn't care. We're the same if it does. So D is the same problem. I mean, D is about leaks out of the pipeline, which provided the technology is effective means if it doesn't leak, then blah, blah, blah. So. No, C and D are both irrelevant for the same reason. I mean, C and D are both about whether the technology will work. Not, not the point. I mean, again, imagine if you had a conversation about if I had a billion dollars, here's what I would do. C is like, you might actually have a billion dollars someday. Doesn't matter. Same sort of thing. I mean, there's no effect on this. There's no effect on the argument because these these are these are non-issues. No, it doesn't strengthen anything. I mean, if you say if blah blah blah, then anything about not blah 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 is off the table. Like these are these are completely irrelevant because of these specific words from the blue box. Blue box with the pink highlight. Like these, these make all such considerations irrelevant, no matter which way they go. Smiley face, if that makes sense. I mean, again, you you can you can simplify this if you want. I mean, if blah 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 blah, then argument or provided blah, 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 then argument, et cetera. I mean, anything about that, right? Like, if I tell you this seems likely, that's irrelevant. It's uncertain whether this is true, irrelevant. There are no signs that this has started happening, et cetera. I mean, yeah, this is the whole point of the word if. This is the, the, the word if exists in the language to do this. I mean, choice C in that problem is kind of like this. Doesn't help the argument, doesn't hurt the argument, because that's what these do. And then E. Non-native species of fish have been introduced into the lake. This is not this is not an argument about how many fish are in the lake. This is an argument about pollution. So, which type of fish are in the lake is not really a thing here, because the argument is ultimately about pollution, not about fish. So that leaves A. And again, when you review these, it might mean walking away from the problem for a couple of days and then coming back to it with fresh eyes because a new look at, at a problem is always the best way to get a new perspective on it. So if you're sort of stuck on these choices, you should just walk away from the problem for a bit and then come back to it. But you, you got to review until you reach the point where it is like black, white, 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 white. Cool. All right, let's do another problem.
Let's try this one. This one is, this one tends to be challenging for people because, because it has a lot of big words in it. So, like, you, you have to understand what this whole threshold of economic viability means. Once you do understand that, it'll be clear what the issue is, but you have to decode that in a way that a 10 year old will understand. Give it a shot. Don't forget where you find multiple choice answers. Go for it. Okay, let's talk about it. Um, I, don't, I don't usually post. If you, have, if you don't have an answer, you should pick one. Um, I, don't, I don't usually post answer distributions, but this is interesting. I mean, we have uh, got four A's, four B's, and four C's. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll give you like 10 or 20 seconds to make a guess if you don't already have one. Remember how this test works. I mean, you have to you have to pick something. You can't not pick a choice. Good news is that the correct answer is actually one of those three that I've already picked. So that's good at least. Okay, let's talk about it. What what is this threshold of economic viability thing? Does it have anything to do with current prices at all? Yeah, this has nothing to do with current oil prices. If you read this, if you read this carefully, I mean, you, you don't have to read it that carefully, but if you just read it slowly and get the meaning of it, I mean, notice especially this. I mean, this has nothing to do with current prices. This is like, okay, it's a price that oil would theoretically have to achieve. So already A is gone because it has nothing to do with anything. Okay, that's 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 not anything to do with a would have to. But what this is, okay, so basically what you have here is because I mean so like oil prices fluctuate a lot, right? I mean even if you don't know the economics of that you you probably know that the price of oil is something that is constantly changing, whereas the price of sunshine is not constantly changing. So, you know, like with solar power, you have technology, and then you have sunshine, which is free. With oil, you have the technology, and then you have oil, which is not free, and which has a price. So, I mean, the technology doesn't really change super fast is the point. So the way they're phrasing this is like oil is the thing whose price goes up and down. Sunshine doesn't because sunshine is free. And so 
there's basically a point where oil would get so expensive that it would be better to just use solar power. That's the point. Exactly. Ravi, that's a good summary. I'm going to put that on the board. I mean, you can make an analogy for this if you want. Um, like, let's say that, like, most people who go into downtown areas of cities just, like, drive and park. But, like, if gas and parking costs are high enough, it's cheaper to just take transit into the city. So, like, in that case, you could have, like, the threshold of viability of transit. Like here, the threshold of viability for public transit would be Basically, this would be how expensive would gas and parking have to get before people would start switching. Give me a smiley face if that makes sense. So notice, even though they call it a threshold of viability for transit, it's it's like actually it's the other costs that are fluctuating. So same sort of thing here. They're talking about oil would have to go to a certain point. So now what they're saying is solar technology is getting cheaper. That's what the paragraph says. I mean, what would you expect to happen if solar technology, remember that sunshine doesn't cost anything. So if you, if solar technology is getting cheaper, what would you expect to happen to this threshold value? Just like if public transit became cheaper, you would expect those gas prices and parking costs to switch over at a lower value, right? Like if this happens, what, what would you expect to happen to the threshold price of oil? Like when would people start switching to solar? It would go down, right? Yeah. Like what you would expect. is people would switch from, from oil to solar at a lower threshold value. Sure. Smiley face if that makes sense. So like what's the only way that this could not happen? Like, what's the only other variable that plays into this? Yeah, it has to be the technology of the oil, right? Because threshold value is stated in terms of just oil prices. So, but remember that the whole cost of that is not just, I mean, like the oil fired technology is not free. So, the only thing that could make this not happen, I mean, this this would actually be inevitable if it, not, if it weren't for the technology prices themselves. Like the only way this won't happen is if the technology of the oil driven processes is also got gotten cheaper. Yeah, so any sort of improvement of the plants or anything like that, that is literally the only variable that is left here because as we mentioned before, the cost of sunshine is not a thing. And we've already said 
solar technology costs have gone down. Threshold value stated in terms of oil price, so oil price is not a thing here, and uh, that leaves us with the oil technology. In other words, that's a standard for a correct answer, and that happens here. Increase the efficiency, meaning it's not the price of the oil, it's the price of everything else. It has to do with oil. As far as choice B, the, the point is we don't care about the components of that cost. I mean, like B is saying that solar has become cheaper overall, even though one of the components of that cost has gone up. But we don't care. I mean, it, it, all we care about is that it's gotten cheaper overall. So this, this doesn't, this is not a thing. It's still, it's still gotten cheaper. You know, like if you were buying gasoline at a pump, like, like let's say that your gas is like $3 a gallon, and then taxes go up on gas, but because of world markets, let's say that gets cheaper, and so you end up paying two seventy five a gallon. I mean, as a consumer, you only care that it's two seventy five and it used to be $3. I mean, B is like saying, okay, the, the gas costs less, even though there are more taxes on it. I mean, you, got, you don't care. I mean, as a consumer, it only matters what the overall number of dollars is that's coming out of your wallet. I mean, smiley face, if that makes sense. Same thing here, right? I mean, the point is the technology has gotten cheaper, and choice B does not change that. Choice B just says that one of the variables going into that actually got more expensive, but so what? Still cheaper overall. D nobody picked because we know that D is not a thing. I mean, we're this the point here is just to compare oil against solar. So things that are not solar or oil don't factor into this. And then as far as E goes, E is a thing that affects the price of oil. As we already said, the price of oil is not, the current price of oil is not a thing. Because this is still theoretically how expensive would oil have to get. So, factors affecting the actual price of oil are non-factors. Any questions about this? Okay, uh, let's see. Christine, you've had some text in your text box for like the last three or four minutes. You're, you're actually typing something then. Let's see what that is, but if not, it would help. Because there's an icon that I see when you have text in your box, so. If you're not actually typing something, then you should erase that. Okay, let's move on to another question. How about this one? Mm. No, if you're really efficient oil plants, then it would. It would actually make the threshold price of oil higher because you could absorb more of that cost before it would matter. So, again, it's the price. It's, it's how much would oil cost before you would have to switch. So, if, if your oil plant became more efficient, then that would mean, I mean, imagine buying a hybrid car. If you buy a hybrid car, that means you are much better able to tolerate high gas prices. It's the same sort of thing. So, because th this, this threshold price is kind of like how expensive would gas have to get before you would stop driving. Robbie, give me a smiley face, that makes sense. I mean, if you buy a really fuel efficient hybrid car, then you're fine, even if gas is $10 a gallon, you're like, whatever, dude. It's actually the opposite of that. If you had a really inefficient 
fuel guzzling factory that these threshold prices would be low in the same way as if you had a Lamborghini that gets eight miles to the gallon then gas prices would get annoying earlier. Okay, let's do another problem. How about this one? So you know where the answer choices are found. Okay, let's talk about it. So, like, uh, again, I don't usually show answer profiles, but this is sort of overwhelmingly interesting again. <laughs> like, everybody's picking one of two choices. Hmm. It means you have to guess. You should probably guess one of the first two. Yeah. Let's take a look. Okay. What are they doing here? I mean, if you look at this argument, they're arguing that something is basically cause and effect, which, I mean, how, how do you break cause and effect relationship? Or how do you, like, what, what things, There are two major ways in which you can show that something is probably not cause and effect. Who can tell me what those are? Because usually strengthening an argument like this is just ruling those things out. Okay, one, because one, yeah, right? So, like, let's say that, say that X correlates with Y. So, Y might X not be the thing that causes Y. So, well, it might work backwards, for sure. And then what else? Like Y might cause X. Because an example of that, if you have something like, um, usually like heavier people have greater appetites, therefore, a big appetite makes people gain weight. I mean, if this is, I mean, this could be the other way around, right? Like, if being heavier actually makes you have a bigger appetite, like if it causes changes in your body that would make that happen, then, like, if if gaining weight makes your appetite increase, then this argument doesn't work. What's the other way that you could knock down a cause and effect argument? Right I can give you a pretty uh, example of it. Right. Not 
say um, parts of town with more let's say parts of town with more gyms tend to also have more upscale clothing stores. Therefore, working out must make people fashion conscious. I mean, that's a stupid argument, right? But what's actually happening there? Because it is true that parts of town where there's a lot of gyms also have a lot of clothing stores. That's, that's totally true. What's going on there? How do you explain that? Well, but if they correlate strongly enough, they're not totally independent, right? Like if you observe this, both dependent on something else is the thing, exactly, right? So both X and Y might depend on some Z thing. In this case, it's just affluence. I mean, parts of town where there's more money have both of these things, and that's obviously what's going on here. So, like, if, like, these are, these both correlate with general prosperity or affluence in the area. So this is the point, right? There are basically exactly two ways to, because I mean, if, if you have a strong correlation, you can't say maybe those things actually are independent because they aren't. Like in point of fact, if there's a strong enough correlation, that's not fake. Like it, they really are correlated. So there has to be something that explains that. Like something has to be causing something. But these are the two ways in which the causation you think might not happen. So if you're going to weaken a cause and effect argument, pretty much going to be saying that these are not, or if you're going to strengthen a cause and effect argument, Kind of have to rule these things out. Let's talk about it. So they're saying, what did they do? They looked at, or or you could just show that the data, or just prove that the correlation is actually real. So, or so rule out a problem with the data themselves. Because that might be a thing too, right? Like if you, a lot of these problems are actually meant to make you think critically about statistics and data and things like that. So for example, they, they, might, they might give you something like, okay, household income is higher in some neighborhood, blah, 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 blah. Therefore, richer people do something. But then if you look at like households and they just have more people in them, then that would mean the, the data themselves are flawed. So there's two basic things going on. Like you might, you might have an issue with the causation and you might have an issue with the data themselves. So let's see what's happening here. If, let's take this to a page with more free space. So what they looked at is after a year, there were more depressed people among smokers than among non-smokers. So they said, took up smoking. correlates with depressed so they're saying cause and effect 
Let's talk about a couple of ways that this might not be true. Okay, so taking up smoking causes this an arrow cause and effect that that's what they think. So one problem here is that it might be backwards, right? Like it might, it might be the case that being depressed actually makes people want to smoke. That could be a thing. So smiley face with that makes sense. might be the case. Remember, you're looking to strengthen the argument, so you would have to actually rule that out. But it might be the case that being depressed makes people, because, you know, depressed people do certain things sometimes that are self-destructive, right? So being depressed makes people more likely to, to adopt unhealthy habits. So if you could rule this out, I mean, you, you, you could strengthen the argument by ruling this out. But there's no answer choice that does that. So, oh well. But if you could rule that out, that would definitely strengthen the argument. But what else could be the problem? I mean, what about the actual data? What about that? Yeah, so that's what we have on the board right now. If if there were an answer choice that rules out being depressed and making people smoke, that would also strengthen the argument. But there's just no answer choice that does that. But what about what about this? Like what what about the data themselves? What did they not do that they really should have done? I guess you could also think about the correct answer in another terms too. Um, but they're saying that smoking actually makes people become depressed. But if you look at their data, they just look at people who were depressed at the end of the study. Like, what did they not look at? I mean, if you, if you were depressed at the end of a study, does that mean that you became depressed? So we're not looking at the quitters because the quitters are not relevant data points. They're looking at the people, yeah, right? They're looking at the people who started smoking within that year. And they're saying, okay, that tells me something about them, like, actually turning into depressive people during that year. So the, the, the data themselves here have a problem which is that we don't, we don't know that this represents anything that actually happened during that year. So the data are flawed because we don't know. We don't know whether these people actually became depressed. As opposed to actually already being depressed. So the, the data don't even represent what they think they represent. Right? I mean, if these are all people who have been depressed for like 12 years, you can also think about it like this, too. Because people who are already depressed would mean it's much more likely that the argument goes the other way. So, in fact, you could view it either way of those two. Like, if the people, if the depressed people, were already depressed, then the direction of cause and effect is the other way. Depression causes people 
So you're going to take out the smoke. Aha. So if you could rule that out, give me a smiley face if that makes sense. Because basically if the depression was there first, then that means the causation could not possibly go this way. That's what choice A does. Participants who were depressed at the start of the study were no more likely to be smokers. So what this is doing is it addresses the problem with the data, and it also rules out this direction of causation. It means that it's not that way. So you can actually think of that in either of those two terms. It's false. It's like the data have an issue in the first place. Also, if the causation were the other way around, then you would obviously expect the initially depressed people to smoke more. And they don't. The only other data point that you guys picked, the only other answer choice, sorry, that you guys picked was D. The problem with D is that they didn't track this. Like the study just tracked whether the people were depressed at the end of the study and whether they had taken up smoking too. So this is not, this is not even a thing here. I mean, this is not going to strengthen anything for sure. I mean, if anything, this is a confounding variable. I mean, so that this is, they didn't track this. So if this matters, it's going to make the study less significant. I mean, this is actually a very general thing. I mean, if I do a study and I claim that my study tells me certain things, if you raise some issue that I didn't study, there's no way that can possibly strengthen my conclusion. That, that's, that's totally impossible. perfectly generality there. I mean, if you raise some issue that I did not think about, then either it's going to be irrelevant or it's going to weaken the strength of my conclusion, depending on whether it matters or not. Right? Give me a smiley face if this makes sense. It's, it, it's impossible that something like this could ever strengthen an argument. I mean, so there's at least one or two blue faces, so let me, let me, let me try to make this general. If I say, okay, I studied variables x, y, and z, I conclude something. Okay, if that's the argument, if somebody points out that I didn't study variable A or B, like this could not possibly help me is the point. I mean, there are only two ways that this could happen. There are two possible outcomes, which are either this is irrelevant if A and B don't affect the thing I'm studying. Or this will actually weaken my conclusion if those things do affect it. I mean, okay, let's say I studied how much people smoke and I found a strong correlation with lung cancer. Therefore, I conclude that smoking causes lung cancer. I mean, if somebody is like, dude, you did not study the color of those people's clothes, obviously irrelevant. Nothing to do with whether you get cancer if you wear a red shirt instead of a black shirt. If somebody points out, hey, you didn't study 
whether these people live in pollution or whether they work in like a job with poor air quality, that actually weakens my argument because those things do matter when it comes to lung cancer. But no matter what, you, you can't make this strengthen my conclusion. That, that's, that's impossible because a lack of data cannot strengthen it. So basically all we're saying is that if you don't research something, that cannot possibly help you. That's the point. I mean, smiling if that makes sense. Basically, common sense, right? A, a lack of research cannot possibly support a research. That's all we're saying. That's impossible. So, choice D is like here is a thing that we didn't research. Because the research just looked at the end of the survey. The research didn't look at what happened in the middle of the survey. So this is not uh, this is not going to help us. Like if, if this is something that matters, it will weaken our conclusion. And if this is something that doesn't matter, it's just going to do nothing. So somebody wanted to see this slide. Yeah, if you want to screenshot that, go ahead and screenshot that. Um, I think we have time to do one more. Yeah, we not time to screenshot it. You're welcome. Try that. All right, if you don't have a choice, you should pick one, please. Let's take a look. So they're using interestingly exotic words this time, but basically this is just saying what the weakening argument. So you still have to figure out what the argument is. Um, now if you've seen enough of my sessions before, you know that I like to pick on words like tricky, but nothing is tricky on this test. I mean, it tricky would mean that even if you were being careful and doing your due diligence and actually thinking through stuff, that you would still, they would still be like, ha ha, I got you. It's like a trap. I mean, that kind of tricky does not exist on this exam, nor will it ever. I mean, that's important to realize. Like if, if this exam ever had a question that was, legitimately tricky, then like the integrity of the entire exam would be destroyed. Like it's, it, that will not ever happen. I mean, the questions are honest. The words mean exactly what the words say and they say exactly what they mean. And they don't mean what they don't say and they don't say what they don't mean. Always. I mean, they're hard because people are not used to processing this kind of formal text. That, that, that's why they're hard. You know, like no, nobody talks about things like weekend argument and stuff in normal life. That, that's where the difficulty comes from. Like in that problem about thresholds of economic blah, 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 blah. I mean, half the people didn't even realize what the argument was even talking about. Like anyone picking a choice about oil prices is bad argument. Didn't even realize what the discussion was about. That, that's what makes it hard is that formal text is not intuitive. So but just make sure that you don't think these are actually tricky in the in the like ha 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 I trick you sense because that does not happen. So okay. Um what are they saying? What is the point of this sentence? Is the point of the sentence about our about bacteria dying? What what is that really saying?
This is saying what about all of the bacteria on Earth? Yeah, it's what Lily says. This this means that all of the bacteria on Earth are from Earth. Or, or at least they're not from Mars. I mean that that that's what they're saying. So I mean maybe they're from somewhere else, or at least that. In other words, Earth has no bacteria from Mars. That's what they're saying in this sentence. I mean, again, the way, there's no rules for this. You just have to think about people saying things in everyday normal conversation. Like if I said something like, hey, if you, if you, even if you sent me an email, it, it must have gotten stuck in your outbox. I mean, you know what that means. That means I didn't get an email from you, is what that means. Or if it was something like, even if you care about me, you sure don't show it. That means you don't act like you care about me. Smiley face, if that makes sense. I think the sound was delayed there for just a sec, so. That's what this is saying. I mean, so this is basically just in a slightly indirect, but very conversational way of saying this. Even if you did that, there's no evidence that means you didn't do it. Earth doesn't have bacteria from Mars. Okay. That's the argument. So if you want to weaken this, I mean, if you want to weaken it, you have to show that there could actually be Martian bacteria. That's what that means. Weakening is argument. Means there could actually be Martian bacteria here on Earth. That's what you want. That's the goal. It's a standard for a correct answer. Remember, you need to do that before you look at the answer choices, ladies and gentlemen. Standard for a correct answer. There's some sort of evidence or some sort of reason why there still could be Martian bacteria. I mean, if you read the paragraph, what the paragraph says is that if you look at all the bacteria, then they all look the same. And if they were from a different planet, they should look different. So you have choice D, which is like, what if all of the bacteria on Earth are actually from Mars? That's what it's saying. Sure. What if all bacteria on Earth are original? That that definitely works. I mean, that that's certainly an objection that sustains here, because the argument is just like, okay, all of the bacteria look like they're from one planet. Well, why 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 couldn't that one planet be Mars? I mean, Smiley face, if that makes sense. That's up to you, smileys. To it, I want it to be. And mostly you pick the correct answer to this one, so it's good. Also, remember the other choices should be totally wrong. So there's also the avenue of just eliminating the other choices. Um, like A, 
So you don't you don't have to establish this because you're just looking for a counter argument to the idea that they're all from Earth. So you guys didn't pick that. You also didn't pick the likelihood doesn't make any difference because we're just talking about what if this happened. Choice C, other means besides meteorites, that, that, that doesn't make any difference. It doesn't matter how they got here. I mean, they're, the evidence in the passage is just like if you look at all the bacteria, they kind of look like they're from the same place. That's got nothing to do with methods of transit. So, I mean, it could be meteorites. It could be you know, some sort of solar wind. It could be like they came on FedEx from some alien planet. We don't care. They're here or they're not here. It doesn't matter how they got here. So this was the wrong answer that was most picked of the wrong answers, but how they got here is not things. It's just whether they're here or not. And then E also, we're only talking about the bacteria that exist now, not the ones that work in the history of the early Earth. Not to mention that these would be originated on Earth, so it doesn't address them. Any questions? So this is D, like dog. All right, um, that's curtain call. Thank you guys. Um, the next one of these sessions is actually next week, not two weeks from now. It's two weeks from now is a national holiday here in the States. Same time, it's the same time as this one, and it's going to be November 17th for the next session. Don't know exactly what the topic is going to be. It'll probably be something in quant, but I can't really guarantee you one way or the other. Depends on, kind of depends on randomness, and it also depends on submissions and things like that. But let's try to switch between quant for a decent pace here. But the next session is going to be November 17th. Same time, same place. Thank you very much. Have a good night, good morning, good afternoon, all that stuff.